I'd now like to ask from the Toronto Police Force, Superintendent Dave McCormick to join us. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure, indeed, at this time, to bring greetings from Chief William Blair from the Toronto Police Service. He is the I never cease to be amazed by the tireless work put forth by Mr. George Marcello and indeed by all of the participants in the various Torch of Life walks. The incredible stories of tragedy and the wonderful stories of lives touched and changed forever by the kindness and generosity of others like these two gentlemen here with us today are truly inspirational. I wish you continued success in all of your endeavors to shine light on the important issue of organ donation and hope to see both awareness of and names on the donor list grow exponentially. Again, it is my pleasure to be here and be a small part of this, and I see great things coming from everybody's joint efforts here today. Thank you very much. I'd now like to ask Mr. Ari Wright from the Canadian uh, Perez Foundation for Peace to join. Thank you, Michael. We are an Israeli-based organization sponsoring this event <laughs> because organ donation has no boundaries, borders, religions. It has one purpose, as our founder, the current president of the State of Israel said, if I would like to be remembered in history, I would like to be remembered as one who saved one life. Mr. Khatib, a Palestinian from Jenin, and Mr. Green from the United States are an example of how people can build peace, not only government. Their donations, their gift of life to Israeli children, to Italian children, is the most important momentum in the history of organ donations. I want to thank George Marcello, and I want to say a word to Member of Parliament, Frank Lees. Your initiative has more than a support. I want to tell the members of the NDP and the Liberals, this support cannot and will not have any limi limits by borders, politics, religions, whatever. This has to happen and the media's role is to say again and again that as long as there are children, adults that are waiting for organs, our duty is to make sure they get these organs. Thank you very much. I'd now like to ask the fathers to uh, step up. I guess we'll start with Mr. Green. Would you like to join me? Thank you all very much for coming. That's and, uh, coming for radio stations. Supported this very important uh, resolution. Um, organ donation exists on two levels. First, and most obviously, is the saving of lives. In our own case, for example, a was back to health, got married soon afterwards, and had a baby. He was born with us. Throughout life, he has been known as Big Nicholas to this small boy. And uh, they've treated him as a hero. Well, now that boy is 15 years old and tall here, but they still refer to my little boy as Big Nicholas. Um, it's just an example of the many things that this can achieve. In, uh, in Italy alone, all the donation rates have quadrupled, so that literally thousands of people are alive today. And an illustration that any one of us at any time can make all the difference. But in addition, at another level, organ donation is at a sort of spiritual level. Um, it leaps all the normal boundaries between us. Black men are walking around with white men's hearts inside them, and vice versa. Hispanics breathe through uh, Asian lungs, and vice versa. And dare I say it, liberals, can see the world through conservative corneas and uh, vice versa. Now what more vivid illustration can there be 
that uh, what divides us as people is uh, trifling compared with what we've got in common. And I think if you were to able to ask my son and Ishmael's son what was the very best thing that came out of all this, it would be that thought. It gives us a hope for a gentleman. I would like to invite Mr. Ishmael Khatib with uh, his interpreter, uh, Imam Ali, to uh, join us. Hello, do you say that? Samalia, of Palestine, and Mughal. For the Awiya, and the Mughal, the Shabin, and the Sabah, the Jesuit, and the Sabah. From the land of prophecies and prophets, from the land of peace, I came here to Canada to represent the pain, the sorrow, and the joy, and the hope of my people. And I'm jumping from country to a country, carrying my wounds and my hope, uh, seeking for the least of rights that a human should have. From the land of Jesus, the son of Mary, and, and the place of Muhammad that went to heaven. And the path of Nur from the Lord of the Angels, and I will lead you to the freedom that will take you to the land of freedom after the years of exile. From the land of freedom, looking for the freedom that we've been looking for for so many years. سنة تليها سنة نمر عبر هذا النفق المظلم عسى أن نرى النور في الب في النهاية. Year come and year another year come and we are in this dark tunnel, hoping for the light at the end of the tunnel. من أرض عشقت أحمد وعشقها رسم أحلامه فيها. From a land that loved my son Ahmed and my son loved her in return, and he designed his dream in it. أعطاني القوة وال وال والحياة من عز طفولة لغيره. And through his, through his death, gave me the strength to be able to provide life for some other children. To a children that, that he was killed by some of their own uh, people. They robbed the happiness, the enjoyment of the festivity of that day from my children. Ahmed yelled out screaming from the pain, my, uh, my celebration clothes got dirty. And bullets went through my skin. What, was, what is my fault, what is my crime, why I'm getting killed? From Haifa, the calamity and disaster began in my life by becoming a refugee in 48. And in Haifa, by the, the destiny of God, that my son passed away back in Haifa. With a smile on his face, and me happy for him knowing that he would be able to provide life for someone else. وها أنا اليوم في كندا أروي ألمي حيث بدأ من هنا من حيفا بلدي مسقط رأس. I'm here in Canada among you, sharing with you my story and my pain that I was I came out from حيفا. وحيفا أخذت ولدي وها أنا اليوم أنشد العدالة والسلام لجميع أطفال العالم في كندا. حيفا that took away the life of my son, but here am I am among you. Seeking peace, happiness, and safety for all children. مثل هذا مثل هذه الأيام سقط أحمد شهيدا واليوم ينتصر الحق على الموت. Like these days, my son passed away, and today the truth is overwinning the falsehood. دبعت حياة جديدة يبعث الأمل من جديد لتبدأ حياة جديدة يعمرها السلام العالمي. With every new life, with every new gift, another life is giving. And a new hope is given to the world. The children, because the life is worth it, we are going to build a new future for them. 
with democracy. To our children, because our children deserve the right to live in peace and harmony and democracy. Our children and the Jewish children have the same equal right to live in peace and harmony and to shun away from killing and wars. هنا أقول للشعب الكندي لنكن ليكن شعارنا نحن الفلسطينيون وكل شعوب الأرض وخاصة الأصدقاء الكنديين شعارنا الحب والسلام والمحبة والحياة للجميع. So I tell my Canadian public, share with me the love and the peace and harmony to bring peace and harmony and life to the whole world. شاكرا لكم لكل إنسان ساهم في مجيء إلى هذا البلد العظيم وإن شاء الله يا عم السلام و. So grateful and thankful to those who have arranged for me to come here to be among you. I thank you for being here and God bless. Uh, I'm not sure uh, the formal part has uh, been completed. I don't know if you have any questions for our guests from uh, California and uh, Palestine and whether you have some questions perhaps for provincial members of parliament. I have a question, some questions for Frank and Rosie and Laura about the whole push for this. I just want to make sure if you can, maybe you guys want to come to the... Just the podium. I'm just trying to illustrate. So this is a, an all-party resolution. And uh, what happens with it here? Because obviously you want to push it. Clearly, uh, the next step is for us to present the resolution in the legislature. Uh, it'll be presented uh, as an all-party resolution. The purpose of a resolution is to indicate, uh, first of all, the wish of uh, members of the legislature uh, and asking the government to take initiative. And uh, so, uh, first of all, the, the, when the resolution is tabled, it'll be a signal uh, to the government that this is an important issue to the members of the legislature, and it calls on the government to move forward to ensure that the necessary steps are taken First of all, what we do about it is that people are asked if they would want to be organ donors. More than 95% of people say it. Unfortunately, less than 18 percent of people have okay. actually registered. I'll introduce you to the reporter and a couple of the um, so there's a huge gap between the fact that people recognize how important it is and being given an opportunity to actually do so. That's number one. So through a measure like this, we raise public awareness about the importance and hopefully through things like uh, the online registry system that is now in place in Ontario, we actually get people to understand the importance of taking that first step. The next step is this. Many times there are circumstances where organs may well be available. It is a matter of then raising the awareness through something like uh, this alert system, sending a signal to both the medical community uh, and probably much more important, the parents of children who might be in a circumstance where they could be potential donors. To raise that public awareness and have the message go out to parents that there is a specific need can in fact help to actually get that organ to the point where it is needed. So it's a matter of raising public awareness, it's a matter of improving our system within this province and hopefully nationally so that that can take place. Who's got, uh, do, do any other jurisdictions have this kind of amber alert type of, uh, I forget what you call it, but it organ, is, organ uh, yeah. There is no jurisdiction that we, have, uh, that we know of at this point that actually has uh, a public alert system. Uh, Ontario would be taking an important first step and uh, we believe should Ontario take this step that there will be other jurisdictions that will quickly follow because it just makes such good practical sense. Is it? Uh, but you're saying first and foremost is public awareness so the, the alert goes out that there's a need for it but we're not changing on how we actually deliver uh, a, an organ to someone in need. No, the, we, we have a very good system in place. The problem really is that there aren't sufficient resources being put behind that system. And I think the other, what the medical community is telling us, is by getting this kind of public support, it will enhance their uh, chances of actually getting governments to provide the kind of practical resources and support to implement.